So in this video, I want to do some more examples of continued fractions of irrational numbers. Um, just as before, I'm going to describe the algorithm we're going to use. So basically, starting from some irrational number x, we want to produce two sequences of numbers, xn and an. And these ans are going to form the basis of the continued fraction. And I'll show you how we define these sequences. First, we let the first term of the xn's, x0, be equal to x. So for instance, x would be root 2. And we're going to set a0 just to be the floor of x0. And by the way, if you have forgotten what the floor means, the floor is just the largest integer, which is smaller than the number inside these braces. So for instance, the floor of pi is 3, because the largest integer, which is smaller than pi, is 3. So, okay, so once we found x0 and a0, then we move to find x1. x1 is just going to be 1 over x0 minus a0. And then a1 is going to be the floor of x1. And then when we move down to x2, x2 is going to be 1 over x1 minus a1. And then a2 is just going to be the floor of this thing, the floor of x2. And you basically want to continue this pattern until you found enough terms that you're, that you're satisfied with, or until you um, can spot a pattern. And once you find this, once you found this sequence of ans, the continued fraction of x would just be the continued fraction with terms a0, a1, a2, and so on. And those a0, a1, a2, a3 are just going to make up these terms here. So that's going to be the first term here, and then here, and here, and so on and so forth. So let's look at an example. Let's look, try and find the continued fraction expansion of the square root of 5. So first of all, I've got to find x0. Well, x0 is just going to be equal to root 5, because I set that equal to x. And what's a0? Well, a0 is going to be equal to the floor of root 5. And I know that root 5 is somewhere between 2 and 3. It's a little bit above 2. So this is going to be 2. And how am I going to use that to find x1? Well, x1 is this. x1 is 1 divided by x0 minus a0. And what's that? Well, x0 is just root 5. So x0 is root 5. And the a0 I've just flown was the floor of root 5, which is 2. And now I want to rationalize the denominator. So I want to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by root 5 plus 2, because the conjugate of root 5 minus 2 is root 5 plus 2. So I'm going to multiply the top by root 5 plus 2 and the bottom by root 5 plus 2. And that's going to give me root 5 plus 2 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm going to have root 5 minus 2 times root 5 plus 2. And that's a difference of two squares because it's of the form a minus b times a plus b. And that's going to give me root 5 all squared minus 2 squared. And that's going to give me root 5 plus 2 divided by root 5 squared, which is just 5 minus 2 squared. 2 squared is just 4, so that's going to be minus 4. And 5 minus 4 is equal to 1. So this term in the denominator is going to return 1. And that's going to give me root 5 plus 2. OK, so that's our value for x1. And now I need to find a1. a1 is just going to be equal to the floor of x1. And the floor of x1 is the floor of root 5 plus 2. Now root 5 is a little bit above, a little bit between 2 and 3. So this number is between 2, let's say, is less than y, is less than 3. So if I add 2 to all the sides of this inequality, that tells me that root 5 plus 2 is between 4 and 5. Okay, So I'm just adding 2 to the lower bound and 2 to the upper bound. And this is a good strategy to use if you want to estimate the values without using a calculator. So this number, this whole number, just write that down, that whole number is going to be between, um, it's going to be somewhere in the interval from 4 to 5. And if that's the case, then the floor of the function, the floor of the root 5 plus 2 has got to be 4. Another way of thinking about that, root 5 is, is something like 2.2, so root 5 plus 2 is something like 4.2, so the floor has got to be 4, because it's, it's the smallest integer, um, which is less than the argument. So let's try and find x2. x2 is going to be 1 divided by x1 minus a1, and that's what? Well, x1 I've just found is root 5 plus 2, so root 5 
plus 2 minus a1 and a1 was what? a1 was 4 so a1 is 4 so that's minus 4 which is 1 divided by root 5 minus 2 now we might have spotted a pattern here because we've got 1 over root 5 minus 2 so let me just draw a circle around this so 1 over root 5 minus 2 and if we look back at our calculation for x1 I also had 1 over root 5 minus 2 here so when we go to the busy um, when we go to the business of rationalizing the denominator we're just going to end up with exactly the same answer we're going to end up with root 5 plus 2 which is our value for x1 so this whole thing is just equal to x1 but if that's the case then when we go to calculate the floor so when we go to calculate a2 which is by definition the floor of x2 that's going to be um, the floor of x1 because x2 is equal to x1 and by definition that's just equal to a1 and likewise when we go to calculate x3 that's going to be 1 divided by x2 minus a2 but we know that x2 is equal to x1 so that's just going to be 1 over x1 minus a2 but a2 is equal to a1 so that's x1 minus a1 and that by definition is equal to x2 so whenever we were if, if we were then going to find a3 that would just be the floor of x3 but because x3 is equal to x2 that would just be the floor of x2 but because x2 is equal to x1 that would just be the floor of x1 and so that would also be equal to a1 so as you can see when you continue these sequences x4 and a4 x5 and a5 we're going to be ending up with exactly the same numbers every single time so we can basically stop the calculation here because we've just proved that all the above values of an where n is greater than or equal to 1 are going to be the same so let's just recap what values have we found well first we found a0 and what was a0 a0 was just the floor of root 5 which was 2 and then we found um, a1 and a1 had what what was the value of a1 a1 had the value 4 so a1 was 4 but then we just proved that a2 had the same value as a1 and we proved that here by this equality and since a2 is equal to 1 a1 has value, has value 4 so a2 must also be equal to 4 so a3 must also be equal to 4 and a4 must also be equal to 4 and so on and so forth so that tells us that the continued fraction expansion of root 5 well, that is just going to be the continued fraction of the coefficients we found, which are a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, and so on, out to infinity. And what does that look like? Well, that's going to be the continued fraction expansion with the coefficients. If I just put in the values I found for a0, a1, and a2, that's going to be 2, followed by 4, followed by 4, followed by 4 and so on and the shorthand way of writing this is to write this to um, semicolon 4 with a bar over it to indicate that the 4 is going to be repeating itself so what does that look like as a continued fraction well that's going to be the first term so if I if I write it like this it's going to be a0 plus 1 over a1 plus 1 over a2 plus 1 over so on and so forth and if I write that out in full, that's just going to be 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 and so on and so forth. So that's the continued fraction expansion of the square root of 5. And basically what we did is we just followed this algorithm given at the top until we found a pattern. And in this case, we found that all of the values of a n might end up repeating themselves. So we don't need to do any more computations. Um, in the future, if you go to calculate some uh, more difficult examples, or let's say something like the continued fraction of root 3 or maybe root 11, you might not find that all the values of an for n greater than some fixed number end up being the same number. You might actually end up finding that um, a1 is equal to 4, a2 is equal to 6, a3 is equal to 4, a4 is equal to 6. So you might end up getting a cycle, and you might have to deal with two different subsequences of the an, and that will help you find the continued fraction expansion. Okay, so that's all I've got time for today. In the next video, I'll look at some more examples of using this algorithm um, above in order to find some continued fraction expansions of other irrational numbers. Um, so if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe um, for more content just like this. Thanks.